right, so this is the digital cockroach bait station. Uh, we're going to talk about how to build spam honey pots and who am I? Uh, I'm senior threat intelligence researcher with uh, Threat Connect and I'm on the T-CERT team and I can't see a thing because of that light but I hope some of the team members are out there somewhere. But uh, that's my Twitter handle, Mauer Utkanos. Uh, Utkanos is the uh, Russian word for duckbill platypus, in case you were wondering. And also a few days ago I met the other uh, person who happens to use the same uh, handle at, at uh, Black Hat. So, so why, why are we doing this? What, is the, what, are the, what are the problems that we're trying to solve and what requirements do we have? So I, my requirements are that I need fresh malware samples and I need fresh malicious links. Uh, I also need fresh uh, advanced fee fraud scams. So, um, you know, just to go over technical terms, advanced fee fraud is like the um, the Nigerian prince that wants uh, to send you a million dollars, but he needs you to send him fifty dollars or a hundred dollars before you can get your million dollars from him. So, those are advanced fee fraud scams, uh, aka four one nine. And the, the goal, of course, in all of this is to get actionable threat intelligence, so IOCs, um, IP addresses, um, spamming nodes, whatever, whatever it is that you're looking for, but you need to know uh, the intelligence. So there's a uh, sort of a uh, difference in terminology. Um, I'm just going to use them interchangeably because the idea of a spam trap and spam honeypot I think are almost exactly the same. Um, and to go to the definition from Wikipedia, so spam traps are usually email addresses that are created not for communication but rather to lure spam. So the point here is to get more spam and to get it from as many different sources as possible and also to be able to track uh, which address you sent over here, which address you put on this website and then you can have metrics as to which, you know, which location for an email address is better at generating certain types of spam and then therefore uh, you know gathering uh, certain types of botnets, certain types of uh, binaries and then you can figure out alright I should focus on uh, seeding the email addresses in this area to get more of Y. I need to seed over here to get more of X. Um, <clears throat> so my, my background is biology and so uh, I found it fascinating to, you know, kind of do a little bit of uh, um, correlation or at least uh, connection between biology and, and what I do now. And so I'm, I don't know if you recognize all of these uh, bait traps, but uh, this one is for cockroaches. Uh, I'm sure you all have seen those. The one in the center. Uh, the, so the, the, the subtitle there, the URL where I got it, that's actually, they actually uh, named it wrong. It's not uh, for cockroaches, that's actually for flies. Um, typically used for catching Drosophila and that kind of stuff. But, uh, or house flies, whatever type of flies you want to catch. That one's more of a general uh, you know, insect trap where the insects are going to slide down and then they can't get up the sides and get out. This one's disgusting. <laughs> That's uh, the, the brown slime that's on there is uh, roach butter, I think it's called. And then the one on the left, uh, on the, or on my right, your left, I don't know. Um, that one is uh, driven by CO2, and this is probably the most disgusting of all of them. That's a bed bug trap. I don't know if you know the... The way, the way that bed bugs uh, operate is they follow uh, CO2, so they're looking for your breath at night. So moving on from the, the uh, biology, so this is the diagram of, uh, <clears throat> of a spam honeypot and the whole idea here is to keep everything as simple as possible, absolutely simple as possible because I don't want to spend time working on the spam honeypot, I want to spend time working analyzing the data that I get from it. So spam goes in, uh, it's your choice as to what mail server you want to use. Um, I use Postfix now, I had started out using SendMail but then I realized I didn't want to have two honeypots in the same thing, I didn't want to have just a, a SendMail honeypot inside of a spam honeypot. 
And so uh, inside the mail server, I have all of the incoming email processed by a Python script. And if any of you were at my workshop on Friday afternoon, uh, you have a copy of a, simpler, sim a much simpler version of that uh, Python script. And the goal there is to, to uh, change the email headers and the rest of the email into uh, JSON format. And then from there to insert that as uh, uh, an indexable uh, JSON document into Elasticsearch. <coughs> So I just wanted to cover a few definitions if you're not familiar with some of the things that I've been talking about. So Postfix is a general purpose mail server. Uh, I prefer using it on FreeBSD because I have a lot of experience with FreeBSD and hardening it. So uh, that's my preferred operating system. Uh, <clears throat> JSON is JavaScript object notation. Uh, it's a machine and human readable data interchange format. Uh, that's the website if you want to know more about it. If you haven't heard of JSON, uh, <laughs> you must have heard of it. So uh, Elasticsearch is a full text search engine. It's accessible via REST API. It stores documents. I'm going to try to raise my voice over that uh, noise. <laughs> uh, so it stores documents in JSON, so it's perfect for my purpose of taking uh, JSON and making something that I can search through and, and find uh, commonalities among uh, you know, spam campaigns and, and so on. So the mail server configuration is uh, the, the goal. It's very simple again. Uh, so you want to accept email that's sent to any username and sent to any domain. So you want it to be completely open, but you don't want it to reply to anything. You don't want it to send back bounce messages. Uh, you don't want to have any sort of outbound email coming from it at all. Uh, typically, you know, I, I, I change the host firewall so that it can't do anything outbound. Uh, <clears throat> and so, you know, obviously anything at anything, so star at star at star, whatever you want to uh, uh, accept, you want to accept all of it. So the idea here is to process all inbound email with a custom Python, Python script and also uh, naturally because it's a mail server you, you, get to, you get a copy of all the messages in the different, uh, if you set it up for inbox or if you've set it up for mailder, uh, you get a copy of all the, the messages uh, nicely uh, divided up by email address that it was sent to. And so uh, the Python script and I, I see one, at least one person from class. So. We went over this Python script in class, and uh, so I, I built it using email.parser core module in, in Python. <clears throat> and uh, I prefer Python 3, uh, but the, for all intents and purposes, this particular library is almost the same in both 2 and 3, or 2, 7, and, and 3 and above. Uh, and what I use it for is to translate all of the email into JSON format, specifically the headers so that the headers are divided up into key value pairs, which they already are in, uh, you know, in an email format, but it's just a flat text file. Uh, and this way I've translated it into JSON and it's a little bit more usable, especially with Elasticsearch. So uh, this is the slide where I could probably spend the next 10 hours uh, talking about it. So, uh, so I've done a lot, I've done a lot, a lot, a lot of thinking about uh, email headers and what data you can get from email headers, uh, how to use it, and, and what it means. So I've divided this uh, mind map into two components. So there's the header and the body. And the header, uh, the, the, first, the first thing at the top, so that's the date uh, time zone. And this is actually uh, more important than, than would be obvious. So the date and time zone shows you uh, either where uh, the, the, the spammer for, so this is a forgeable you know, header field, but the time zone will show you the uh, geographical approximate location of the origin uh, IP address. So you know, if you see some date time zones, uh, the time zones that are in uh, uh, Eastern Europe, China, you know, these things are not a, not a strong indicator, but they are still an indicator. So received SPF, um, this is actually an anti-spam uh, header field, and so looking for things like SPF fail um, are you know, uh, a good way to, to, to find stuff that's, that's nasty. Uh, DKIM domain keys. 
So this is another, um, another anti-spam header, uh, but this one is uh, driven cryptographically. And one thing that was interesting was, uh, so a couple of years ago, LinkedIn had a, um, a fantastic idea of injecting spam, their own spam in a man in the middle system called uh, Intro. And uh, intro basically broke DKIM very badly because uh, changed the, it changed the signature of the email because it tampered with all of your emails. Um, and I also check it out on, on YouTube. I did a, a talk on LinkedIn intro specifically uh, and tearing it apart a few years ago. So uh, the next part, the, the hello string. So this is the component of an SMTP handshake, and I don't know if anyone has done like a manual SMTP sh handshake by telnetting to port 25 on a mail server. So the first thing that you do is you type uh, ELHO or HELO, and then you uh, type in the, the um, you give the mail server the uh, domain that you theoretically are coming from. Uh, you can totally lie to many mail servers. Uh, some mail servers will check whether that is uh, related to the uh, reverse DNS of the IP that you're coming from or not. Uh, this one is important. Uh, I think this one is very, very important be uh, for two reasons. Uh, first of all, if you're dealing with uh, a piece of uh, malware which sends out spam, it's obviously going to be connecting to a mail server to deliver the spam. And so it needs to be configured in advance with some sort of fake uh, HELO string. Uh, it's not, if it's coming from a compromised workstation, obviously that it, it doesn't, uh, it might know, but it doesn't care what the, the real domain name is, if there even is one for that, you know, maybe it's someone's home, uh, home workstation and there's no domain that it can possibly figure out so it can't tell the truth to a mail server so it will be uh, configured to either say the same thing over and over so that's an indicator or it'll have something similar to uh, you know a domain generation algorithm where it comes up with something that's different each time however because it's dri uh, because it's created algorithmically uh, you can then use that as an indicator as well. If you can figure out what the algorithm is that it uses to generate that set uh, or that type of that uh, that set of um, domain names, you can then identify uh, the particular uh, botnet or uh, piece of uh, malware which is generating that particular piece of spam. The next part is the originating IP. So. Obviously, this is the IP address of the thing or the entity, whatever it is that's sending the spam out to your mail server, to your spam honeypot, I should say. Um, and there's a few way, few things that you can do to to, uh, to analyze this particular piece of information. So these are the basics: uh, network who is basically getting uh, what the identity of the the you know the ISP or at least. Uh, uh, maybe lower an ISP, the hosting company, or maybe the, the local um, reseller of the IP address. And then GeoIP, so the location of the, of the IP address. Some of this, if you get the GeoIP from Network Who Is, it might not actually correlate with the, the real geographic location of that IP address, but at least it'll give you a hint. Um, and then ASN Who Is. Uh, ASN Who Is typically is a little bit cleanlier, uh, cleaner than Network Who Is. Uh, it typically has uh, better, better data in it than Network Who Is. It's maintained a little bit better. Uh, our Who Is, this is, a, this is where uh, if a particular IP address has been reassigned to maybe a, a, a hosting reseller or something like that, uh, the Our Who Is data will contain the address and, and identity information of that reseller. Reply to, this is an important one. Uh, when, we, when I was doing uh, anti-phishing, uh, this is basically the, if, if you're talking about a 419 scam or advanced fee fraud, um, the adversary needs to collect the replies to, to, their, to their fraud scam. So typically the reply to address is not forged. Typically the reply to address, as long as it still exists and hasn't been taken down, uh, has, you know, some slime ball actually reading the email that comes into that. So that's another important indicator there. Um, <clears throat> subject, obviously, uh, this is an indicator, very valuable. Uh, you, you have a new fax, please click here uh, or 
some such thing like that. And then the from address, this is typically forged. This is very easily forged. Um, and it could say almost anything. Uh, it might even be different than the reply to. So what's that? Can I give you a massage for scav hunt? Uh, sure. Yes. All right. Hard, now hard to concentrate. <laughs> um, all right. So envelope sender. This one is uh, another component that comes from the SMTP handshake. So if you've uh, again, if we go back to the manual SMTP handshake where we've got the HELO string. The next two things that you do is uh, uh, mail from and receipt to. So uh, that one is uh, typically um, also an indicator. So this one, this one uh, some mail servers will check whether this is, uh, um, has it. <laughs> I'll try, hold on. Uh, so envelope sender, uh, also an indicator, obviously. Uh, return path, again, this is an indicator. X mailer, this is one that <laughs> <laughs> So uh, X mailer, this is one that I find important, uh, especially when uh, talking about compromised websites. So the X mailer is uh, a, a header field that shows uh, either the name of the file or the full URL of the mailer uh, that sent the, the, the piece of spam. So if it was coming from like a PHP mailer that was installed uh, via backdoor on a compromised website, uh, often, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where was I? All right, so Xmailer. Uh, Xmailer is, is an important indicator, I think, uh, for two reasons. Um, often the, uh, the PHP script that sends the spam, and we'll see this in a moment. Um, actually, this is in a slide from the, from the workshop. I apologize. So we won't actually see the email, uh, the, the Xmailer uh, string. Uh, but Xmailer. If you have a compromised website and there's been a backdoor installed, and you'll often see, you know, mailer1.php, and if you go to that URL, you'll have like uh, text entry boxes, and you basically enter your spam uh, headers, you enter your spam body, and all that stuff, and then hit send, and then it sends it uh, via the, the the web server, and so often the URL for that particular uh, X uh, that, that PHP mailer will, will appear in the X mailer uh, header field. And so that becomes a URL indicator, um, indicator that the uh, website has been compromised. It's also, uh, sometimes it can be forged. So I've seen botnets which will just generate fake uh, X mailer header fields in a set. So they'll say, you know, they'll just have a, a, a you know, a, a canned set of fake X mailer headers. Uh, but again, that's another indicator. So I can see, you know, I can actually determine that this is a specific, uh, this specific botnet because I see this fake X mailer uh, header. And if I go and look for that particular URL, there's nothing there because it, you know, uh, that's not, you know, that's not how that botnet sent that particular piece of spam. Uh, and then, obviously, mailer URL, that's uh, related just like what I was saying to the X mailer. So that's, that is the indicator that I'm talking about. So the next component here is the MIME boundary string. So if you're not familiar with MIME or, or what I'm talking about here, it's the, uh, there's one, one, in, one of these in the header and it, it tells your mail client where the boundary of any attachment uh, or where the change from uh, either HTML to text or, uh, and each one has this uh, MIME boundary string at the beginning and the end of that attachment. And then it's also in the, in the header. So uh, I have a theory and I, I you know, I, I'm, I'm working on this at the moment that the MIME boundary string is uh, also an indicator. And the reason for this is possibly the, the you know, some botnets might just use a, a pre-generated specific MIME boundary string, and then you'd be able to, to use that, obviously, as, as an indicator. Um, Simhash, so this is not actually a header field, obviously. Um, so Simhash 
is a type of piecewise uh, fuzzy hashing. Uh, there's, uh, I, there's probably more than this, but the two main ones that I use are SSDeep and SimHash. And SSDeep is uh, more specifically um, tailored towards uh, binaries. So if you have a, a, a uh, malware binary, you run it through SSDeep, and then you get a signature where uh, you can compare two different binaries and see maybe how similar or how different they are from each other. Um, and so SimHash, the concept is the same, uh, but the target is slightly different. So the SimHash is an algorithm that, that is uh, meant to look at text. So uh, the con and my concept here is to take, a, take the SimHash algorithm and then run the SimHash algorithm on each header field so that you can uh, you know, show the similarity or difference between any, any, any single header field uh, that, you've, that you've run through the SimHash algorithm. Okay, and also, uh, by the way, there's one, one header field here uh, just received, which is missing from my uh, mind map. It was one of those so extremely obvious that I didn't even put it on the mind map, but someone in the workshop mentioned, you know, hey, you don't have received on there, but yeah, so uh, received is another important header. And also, uh, I want to point out that the, uh, the Python script that, that, uh, that I use uh, basically catches all header fields. So it converts the entire header, even the X. You know, the uh, X, by the way, is just a, you can have X and then an arbitrary string after that as a key. So you can have as many X blah, blah, blahs as you want in a header. And so, uh, the script that I use catches all of them and just converts the whole thing into a key value pair set in, uh, in um, JSON. So moving on to the body, these are, uh, these are some of the indicators that you can pull out of a body. Um, phone number, obviously this is for, again, if we're going back to like the 419 scams, a lot of them use uh, a uh, VoIP line or you know, uh, a, a mobile phone number and they'll be sitting there and it'll, it'll basically, they'll have uh, um, one number that they're routing calls to and then the, num the, the sort of like crumple zone of uh, numbers that they, that they expect to have taken down constantly are the ones that you're gonna find in the, in the email, in the spam. Uh, obviously, attachments, this is one thing that, uh, that is, uh, you know, a method that they deliver malware to you with. So obviously, you know, it's the, the old don't click on and don't run anything that's executable or a document that you get in, in, uh, in, in email from anyone that you don't know. And even if you know them, let's not run it anyway. Um, <clears throat> and then URLs. So often you'll find a drive-by URL uh, contained in an email. You'll also find phishing pages. Uh, we covered some pretty interesting phishing uh, um, techniques and pages in, uh, in, in, our, uh, work, in my workshop. Again, take a sim hash, so all the text, all the body of, all, all, all spam body emails is uh, text, so obviously just take a sim hash of this, you can do comparisons. Uh, also do sim hashes of the body components, so uh, take a sim hash of maybe the, uh, the, 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 the HTML and, and the text. Uh, some, some stupid email uh, clients only, you know, only generate and some, uh, only generate uh, HTML emails with no text. So this is where, uh, what I mean by a rendered sim hash, uh, use something like Beautiful Soup uh, or another uh, HTML parser and just remove all of the HTML tags so that you're left behind with just the text and then take a sim hash of that text. And obviously an email address, you can get email addresses and keep the text itself. So that's the, those are the things that you can collect from the body of the email and that's the header. Um, all right, and then after you've generated, after you've generated this uh, uh, blob of JSON for the header, uh, put it into Elasticsearch, create an index, uh, set the type, you know, you have like type and index. Um, you know, I just call it email as the type and then emails as the index. Uh, and then you can use Kibana uh, to do visualizations uh, on the data that you, that you have uh, jammed into Elasticsearch. All right, so now, now the fun begins. You've done the boring stuff, you've stood up a server. Uh, 
that part is done. Now we get to have some fun uh, baiting the trap. So, register a domain. Uh, don't bother paying for a domain the first time you go through this. Uh, just go and get a go get one of the free uh, free domains. Uh, if you do buy a domain, make sure you turn on privacy. You don't want your home address or your work address or anything related to you in the uh, in the who is information for a spam trap, uh, spam honeypot domain. <laughs> Obviously, that is a bad idea. Um, and then you want to configure DNS. Uh, there's a couple of sort of really specific uh, components here. You want to assign three IP addresses. The point here is you are mimicking, uh, you're making this look uh, believable as an actual set of mail servers. So you want to behave exactly like uh, you know an, an email admin at a normal company. So you want it to look legitimate. So assign three email addresses. Uh, I'm sorry, email address. Sorry, three IP addresses. Uh, even if you're only running one uh, virtual server. Assign three, e assign three IP addresses to that uh, in you know virtual NICs, and you'll be able to have you'll, you're basically increasing your your attack surface that the spammers are going to be able to send to. Um, also, create primary and backup host names. Again, you want it to look like a real set of mail servers. So mail one dot blah 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 dot com, mail two dot blah 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 dot com, mail three dot blah 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 dot com. Um, <clears throat> also, create three DNS MX records, not just one, and assign them different priorities. Uh, I found this is very important because often the way companies have set up their, their, their backup and primary mail servers, they've done it a little, uh, incorrectly in that they trust the email that comes from their backup server. But the backup server may not have the same level of uh, spam filtration as their primary, and so spammers will avoid even sending to their to the, the organization's primary server. They will send the spam to the backup and the, the you know the the the, the uh, secondary and tertiary um, MX records specifically because they they know that. Uh, sometimes that will avoid the spam protections that the organization has. Um, and if you are a mail admin, sys admin, go and check. Go and check and make sure that your secondary and tertiary mail servers have the same spam protection that your primary does, um, because that's a, 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 a huge hole. But the point here is have those tertiary and secondary MX records so that you catch that additional, uh, you know, that additional fractional lar larger amount of spam. And then you want to generate email addresses. So you want to seed them across the internet. You want to spread them everywhere. Put them in forum posts. Uh, jam them into your, uh, jam them on your website. Put them in comments. Uh, you know, be as uh, crazy about them as you want. Uh, seed them in your website. Uh, give them to your friends. You know, make it a game. See who can generate the most spam. See who can like uh, uh, get the most uh, stuff coming from the particular email address that they have seeded for you. Uh, but for all of this, keep track of where and when and who you gave them to and where the where they went. Uh, and this is super important so that you know uh, when I seeded this email address to here compared to seeding an email address here, I can then track the metrics for how much spam each one generated. So maintain a database or keep a spreadsheet or I don't know, write them down on a piece of paper, but make sure that you keep track of where the addresses went and when you, when you seeded them so that you can do some metrics on that uh, afterwards. So, uh, registering a domain. Uh, there's many, many, many free services for getting uh, uh, um, domain names out there. The adversary uses them. Why can't we? So just go. Don't don't need to spend money on this. Uh, also, protect your identity by using uh, uh, basically burner emails, uh, domain registration, DNS, free DNS services. Um, all of these, there are free services out there for each one. Uh, and when you're setting things up, if if it's possible, if it's possible that you can set it up this way, when you contact all of these things to set them up, use Tor. You know, be as protective as possible of your own identity. Uh, 
And then before you begin seeding, make sure that you verify your DNS records and verify your who is. Look at it. Look at it carefully and make sure that you haven't missed something and left maybe your name in there or something that someone could something that could lead uh, an adversary back to you. So take a look at it. Um, if you want to look at your DNS records, uh, maybe look at your DNS records on a uh, another machine. Use a VPN to look at it from somewhere else, so you can see whether the TTL has uh, has updated and you can see the the fresh DNS record. Um, also, make the username on the server generic. Don't log into your server with a username that's your name. Because if the server gets popped, they now know your name. So uh, make it generic. Doesn't matter. Uh, whatever you want to just make your username, username. Or your admin user, admin. Doesn't matter. Uh, just make sure it's not your name. So check your DNS records. Uh, this is this is just a dump from uh, example.com set up uh, how I would want a um, a spam honeypot set up correctly. So as you can see, I've set up uh, five name servers and then uh, uh, three MX records, and I've called them mail one, mail two, and mail three. And the they all have a different priority, as you can see, the 10, 20, and 30 priority, and then the a, the A records for each one. Um, that's just fake. Those are fake numbers. But I, I've set three, three different IP addresses uh, for each one of the mail servers. And again, back to the really fun stuff. So this is when you gen generate email addresses. So you want to generate email addresses that look believable. So have fun with it. Have a lot of fun with it. So uh, these are a few of my favorite random name generators. So you can go in there um, behind the name. You get to learn a little bit about what the meaning of the names are that you're, sitting, you're seeding into email addresses. Uh, random name generator on info. Uh, name mesh. Uh, these are funny, actually. And these are uh, for generating believable domain names that, that sound like a real business. Uh, these are hilarious. They will generate uh, just you know, ridiculous business names. Um, and business name generator. Uh, I love Scrabble, by the way. I love playing Scrabble. Scrabble's fantastic. So why not increase your Scrabble knowledge while you're seeding your spam uh, honeypot? So go look through Scrabble word finders. Start memorizing some of the smaller, uh, you know, the, the two-letter words or three-letter words and uh, whatever. Uh, go through word find, uh, word finder, your dictionary. Um, increase your Scrabble uh, knowledge while you're while you're working on spam. Uh, also, an anagram solvers. These are great. You put in uh, basically you put in a word, and then it shows you all of the other uh, you know words that are made up of the same letters but rearranged. Um, so, just the the point here is have fun with this process. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't need to be boring. And hopefully, after you've done all of this and you've got your your uh, mail server set up, you've seeded email addresses. And now you have spam rolling in, uh, and this one is great. This is um, uh, this is probably the, the 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 best piece of spam that I've ever seen in my entire life. So it uh, has ASCII art in it, and it's it's basically a, a a hand telling you click click on this link. And if you look at the link, uh, I would never click on that. If you see a link that ends in like main.php or document.php or something like that. Never good. Never, never, never good. OK. So uh, thank you. <coughs> uh, this is my, my Twitter handle. Uh, that's my company's Twitter handle. This is the blog. Um, next week after we're all back uh, home, There'll be slides and everything from my workshop and from the presentation up on our blog. And uh, do we have any questions out there? Anybody? In, in, in the back. You'll have to yell, because. Very good point. So uh, if I'm if I'm getting your gist, uh, make your entire uh, DNS set of DNS records believable. So have a uh, and and actually you're, you're right. Maybe even have a web server with a believable website on there. 
So he's saying uh, have an A record for uh, www.blahblahblah.com so that you have a fully believable uh, DNS record. That's a very good point. Another good point. So yes, uh, yeah, you will get you will get spam to those records, right? All right. Uh, any other questions? Question. Yes. You're gonna have to yell. Yes. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, so the, the, the Python script code, the, if you, if the, the people that came to my workshop, they already have a copy of it and we've worked with it, but I'll make sure to put this up um, when I get back to, to, to home. More questions? Yes. Yeah, no, they're they're not they're not necessary. But I'm I'm not concerning myself with the necessity of a particular email header. I'm using these as indicators to determine possibly the origin of that particular piece of spam. Uh, use it to correlate um, across like maybe this particular botnet compared to this particular botnet produces a, a slightly different set of X. X, you know, X headers. So whether they whether they are uh, required or not is not important to me. It's using them uh, as an indicator. If that makes sense. Question? More questions? Okay. Um, so the question was: Is there any insight on um, you know taking the knowledge, like taking the knowledge that you're gathering from this, and then using it uh, in the, your example with spam assassin? So I would say uh, yes, and that's that's actually the, the ultimate goal of all of this. So what you're going to do is you've got uh, basically a library of spam that you've already collected. You have spam coming in. You're analyzing the spam. You're pulling out indicators like the origin IP, um, and these are all things that you can use to block, you know, future spam. In addition to knowing about, you know, to, in addition to the, the the threat intelligence component of it, you can also take these indicators and you can push them out to a defensive device or a defensive system such as uh, Spam Assassin. More questions? Okay, thank you everybody. Thanks for coming out, appreciate it.